I'm joined now by Matt Britland, Director of the Education Consultancy Realise Learning and also Head of ICT at Kingston Grammar School in London. First of all, I'm a school. I'm introducing new technology. What should be in the back of my mind? I think from the very beginning you've got to think about how it's going to be used um, to support teaching and learning. And the day, technology is a tool um, and it's, you know, it's there for a reason. If you don't know why you're going to use it, I would say, you know, don't don't buy anything until you know until you know that. And also, staff training as well is important. Um, how are you going to deliver staff training so they can effectively use that technology with their students? What about the relationship between tech companies, the providers, and the actual schools? Because I imagine, on the one hand, they're wanting to make a profit. On the other yeah. hand, on the school side, they're being hammered on on, on funds, aren't they? Yeah. Um, from my experience, they're quite good because the tech companies really need to work with the school um, in order to support what we're doing and they also need to, you know, we need to be able to trust them and trust that they're doing the right thing. So it's, you know, overall I think it's, it's good. I think what might um, maybe improve things is if some of the tech companies are able to go into a whole variety of different schools um, in order to sort of use their kit and try and you know, promote it with schools, from independent schools to your, um, to, you know, your, your state schools as well. Very important, though, to choose the right tool for the job, the right technology, because there must be quite a difference in, in the demands in the classrooms here. Yeah, absolutely, and that comes down as well to having someone in the school who, who knows how that technology is going to be used, is how it's going to work. Because um, without that, you, you've just got a, a bunch of technology that no one really knows how to use and no one knows how to utilise, and it's a lot of money wasted, really. Technology is one thing, but it's not the be-all and end-all. It's the type of technology and how engaging it is for pupils who maybe go home, play computer games, they're very engaged, but you know, if they think it's just boring education, they're not going to be engaged, are they? <laughs> this is it. It doesn't matter. Technology itself isn't necessarily engaging. It's down to how it's used. So, I mean, you could have all singing, all dancers, you could have a bunch of iPads or, you know, other tablets and thinking, yes, this is going to be cool, where we, all the kids are going to love it. And actually, if they're used in a really boring, bland way, it doesn't matter what tech they've got. It needs to be used, in, you know, to its full potential. And that's when the engagement starts coming in. And that's when they're being used, you know, to, to teach and the kids are there to learn as well. So. Let's talk about the digital divide. Clearly it does exist in some areas, but is there a case here it's not just a digital divide in what some pupils have in their homes, whether it's the latest technology or older technology, mm -hmm. is there a danger of a digital divide within schools themselves? Absolutely, and, and it's happening across the country. Um, not all schools are going to have the same amount of money as, as, as other schools. Um, so when you'll have some schools buying top-of-the-range computers and tablets and, and software. You'll have some schools who just won't be able to do that. Um, and it's an issue, basically, um, because there is, there is that digital divide between schools. And also, you know, you've got your kids at home who some, you know, may not have access to the internet either. Technology is changing at an unbelievable rate. So if you're in a school, if you're in charge of this type of ICT or technology, what you, should you be looking at in, in the coming months or years? Um, just you need to be looking at um, other countries, so sort of the Asian countries, um, South Korea, Indonesia, all that sort of thing. How are they using it? Because they seem to be quite, you know, they seem to be a little bit further ahead than us, maybe. Um, and I think it's a, a good idea to have um, to w where you want it to go yourself. Um, and then when you can see, sometimes technology isn't necessarily just there for education, but you can see something in there that might really work. So. You've got motion sensors, for instance. Um, that can be really powerful in schools, I think. Um, really engaging, and it could change the way um, you know, students and teachers interact with what's going on around them. So finally, from your perspective, let me make you sort of commit yourself. What, what right. out of all the wealth of technology that you're viewing at the moment, now and in the future, do you think they should be looking at? What really turns you on? Um, well, I think you have to look at the cloud. I think things like um, being able to you know, create cloud documents. This is storing materials um, online. The ether, online. Absolutely, especially. but not just storing it, but actually editing it online as well. And, you know, schools could really use that for, you know, collaboration with, um, for students to collaborate with each other, um, for teachers to collaborate. And also, you can go on holiday and still access all your, um, your files and your documents if you've got an internet connection. And also, I think it's quite interesting about, you know, things like Google Glass and stuff like that. How is augmented reality going to start sort of edging its way into the classroom?
Okay, well, taking technology on holiday with you, it's a frightening <laughs> thought, but uh, Matt Brittle, thank you very much thank for you. joining us on the programme. Well, we've heard about changes in education technology from a teacher's perspective, but how about the pupils that they're teaching? Let's go back to Hartsdown Technology College to hear what they've got to say. Yeah, I think it's extra. You could just make any map of your design. You could just think of anything you could make it. Hey, like, if it, you wanted. So I can play more games and it would make me fun. Good to use, um, easy to make games. Um, it's better than all the coding. It's really interesting, interesting, unique. You can make like whatever games, you can build whatever. It's a bit like Minecraft, but like more advanced. The yeah. most interesting thing I've used on Cody would have to be the Mars rover. You get to make your own little Mars planet and everything, so like a village, like we made a village out of it, so mm -hmm. it's quite interesting. I think at first it's a little bit difficult, but once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. I think it can help us study more and help us learn even more quicker. And it can help us understand it quicker as well, because I had no idea about any of this from before we started it, but it's a lot easier to no. it's a lot easier than When we very first started, we was really confused. We got us an Xbox remote, and we thought we was going to be using the computer to keep our stuff problems going. And then interact with it using the Xbox controller, which I found that the children generally enjoy, and they certainly prefer it over the mouse and keyboard. So it's, it's a bit more exciting, it just adds something different to the lessons, rather than it from the alternative potentially could be sort of programming manually, uh, which uh, some students probably wouldn't engage with quite so well. I prefer using Kodo. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot easier to use. Um, instead of typing in loads of codes, um, you can just easily click something that will pop up and program it to do stuff you want. Kodo generally helps uh, in a number of ways in building students' skills. I would say problem solving is a particularly good one. Uh, the ability to sort of sit and work out why something's not working because inevitably the children will make a program and it won't work straight away and they've got to figure out why it's not working and that's a skill that they'll need in the future and in future careers working out problem solving is a really essential skill. I think it's really important to get the technology right in the classroom. Uh, there's no point in getting loads of technology just for the sake of having new technology. It needs to have a real purpose, it needs to have an impact in the classroom, otherwise there's just no point. Um, for example, my, my, computers, my room's got lots of computers in it, they're great, they suit the purpose and, and they impact on my children. Uh, but I wouldn't replace them with a room full of laptops because for my subject that wouldn't be a useful uh, substitution. So it's, it's easy to get washed away with new technology when it comes out. I think this is great, this is really exciting, but you have to bring it back to does it have an impact in the classroom? Is it going to be useful in lessons? And if it's not, then you have to consider whether it's worth the investment. It's, it's not never a good idea to purchase lots of expensive equipment and then find that actually it's only related to a very small part of the curriculum or, or doesn't work with the majority of the children. It's really important to pilot the things with a smaller group and see how they work and then maybe purchase more of the equipment. Traditionally, girls haven't been quite so into ICT and computing as perhaps the boys. I do notice that in, in my lessons, when we get out the Xbox controllers, for example, the boys seem to get a bit more excited than the girls do. I think that's something that they're using at home often more, more frequently than the girls might be. So, um, traditionally, I think it is a more male-dominated <coughs> subject, which is something that I'm, I'm hoping to um, change as the years move on. There's not really any IT industries in the area in which my school's located, so I've set up a website which interviews women in IT. And the website's called Geeky Barbie's Travels. I've got an actual Barbie doll um, who's featured on the website, and she goes around to different teaching conferences with me. Uh, she became quite popular when I went to Prague for a recent Microsoft event uh, through Twitter. So from there, I thought, oh, well, I'll set up a website for her, and she'll be able to um, 
think, be kind of an icon for inspiring girls into IT. Te teachers are looking for ways to inspire their girls to make them want to go into this industry. And, uh, and the feedback I've had from other teachers has been really, really great. At BET, yeah, we, we, at BET we saw some robots that were, you could program directly on the computer and they would dance and, and kind of do whatever you, you programmed them to do. They're very sophisticated. Uh, they were incredible. I'm Mark Connors, and I can connect to the internet through Wi-Fi. I can recognize your face, answer your questions, play music, grab objects, and even play soccer like a pro. I'd love to get my hands on one in my classroom, but unfortunately they're very, very expensive. I think um, way too expensive for us to be able to afford, so that was a bit of a shame. Uh, the other technology that, that I'm quite excited about is tablet PCs. I think that's great that we can take a, a computer and compress it into a tablet and then take it out and about and, and, uh, and carry out our task without being fined in the classroom. I think that's going to be quite exciting, not so much for my subject, but for other subjects like history and geography, being able to take a, a computer essentially out with them on trips and record data, uh, that's going to be quite exciting for, for the children to use. I don't really know, I can't, it's hard to think of technology that hasn't been invented yet. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, movies now like having holograms in my room so we can bring, bring back to life figures from history and have them standing in my classroom and then history teachers can get their students to interview this, this figure from, from the past almost. Uh, stuff like that but it's probably a bit of a crazy idea I would say. Uh, but it, you know, the new things are coming out every day and it's amazing how much technology changes. That's all from this edition of Business World. A big thank you to everyone who contributed to the program. Yes, in the coming weeks we'll be looking at the London Book Fair and the publishing industry and why the UK remains a popular destination for Chinese shoppers. Although, could the retail sector be performing better than it is. If you've got any comments about our program, you can of course email us at hello at propellertv.co.uk. So please do get in touch. And now, goodbye from both of us. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.